Prototype testing is kind of a service that we do for small businesses and individuals who come up with various projectile designs and they want us to film it with a high-speed camera. These designs come from all over the world, Russia, Australia, and some from the United States even. Now tests like these are normally never seen by the public, but we thought it'd be fun to bring you along. Today's prototype comes from Russia, from the beautiful city of St. Petersburg. This was designed by Alexei Lavrov, who has sent us other designs in the past. The slug is constructed of solid brass, weighing in at 32 grams or around 500 grains. The slug does have a hole bored down the center of it. The purpose of that is just to control the weight. Now those familiar with Russian slugs may say, hey, it looks a lot like the Leningradka slug. And you, you're kind of right, but the, the shape is slightly different. Uh, Alexei's is a little more back heavy, and it also has a beveled nose, probably to improve the aerodynamics. The Leningradka is smaller in diameter. It also weighs quite a bit less at only 26 grams, but it also requires a proprietary Sabo system to ride in. Alexei's design still is a Sabo type projectile, but he decided to simplify things by using off the shelf sporting wads. And Alexei specified that I trim the little webbing between the pedals so that they'll have a better chance of opening up smoothly. Alexei did paint these things that bright color, hoping they'll show up better on camera. Now, there is some disagreement between Alexei and his colleagues about whether that sporting wad would be suitable for this type of projectile. So he specified that we split the shot cup completely in two, we eliminated the cushion, and added a uh, cork wad between there to give it much more support. And we'll be testing both of these designs side by side. We're at the private rifle range here where we normally shoot. This is, a, like I said, a rifle range with a bench and everything. And uh, that's where we, we shoot because of the lighting and, and camera access and everything. But uh, they saw us here last summer when it was hot. We were in the shade over here. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. But this is where we shoot at. So it, it is a private range. We don't want, we don't have, we, we have permission to shoot here, but we're not going to tell anyone where it's at because pretty soon it's going to get trashed and abused and everything. So, but uh, yeah, the, the owners do come out here and check on us, make sure we're doing everything uh, properly and clean up and everything. But uh, yeah, it's it's so it goes so far down there that you can shoot rifles without without a berm. It's, it's really surprising. But uh, we just we just shoot shotguns out here, which is very cl low, you know, short range stuff. Stuka bomber. <laughs> yeah. Welcome back. All right, welcome back back. <laughs> Tongue tied. I just ate an orange. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back to Alflata Crew. We got to try something new here. These are kind of a uh, prototype brass slug from Alexei uh, in Russia. Yeah, St. Petersburg. And these are uh, similar to the Diablo shape. That what do you call those? The the Leningradka two. Yeah, those. Yeah, it's. It, I kind of call it the Russian Diablo. It's it's very. It's quite a bit different in in. From a normal Diablo shape, yeah, real tail good. heavy, you know, yeah, real, weird, real, real heavy base, but basically the Diablo shape. We got two different configurations: one with a standard uh, cushioned wad, and then one that's uh, got a cork, uh, what you want to call it, spacer in there. But the wad cup has been split, so we're going to see if we can get a good separation in between the wad and the uh, the slug. I try not to drive that wad up in through that hole in there. In there, in there. Yeah, the hole is there just to keep the slug from weighing too much, really. Yeah, it shouldn't affect aerodynamics because of the uh, shock wave in front of it. Yeah. But uh, we've got a gallon jug about 15 yards down range. Let's see what these will do. A normal wad first. These are loaded with the same powder load. Everything's the same except for that, the, the, the wad, the way the wads are loaded. Okay, I'll ready whenever you are. That's got a 
good sharp recoil. And the first couple high-speed camera shots are not very good, but I was wanting to really show the separation of the slug and the wad more than anything. So I was trying to keep everything in focus by cranking down on the iris, and that just screwed up the quality completely. Still, the slug was accurate, so that's a good sign. And another good sign is the wad survived perfectly. So this system seems to be working well so far. Okay, split wadding. It appears to be. Okay. It's a good sign. Difference Both. in recoil. That More. was a little stronger recoil. Because of no cushion. No cushion in there. You could definitely feel the difference. Okay. Okay. Again, my camera settings aren't doing me any justice. Uh, but again, the slug was accurate. Very similar uh, impact, accuracy, and everything as the first shot. Okay, another uh, normal wad. Um at the lead plate. We forgot to do a lead plate shot with the tracers and people were upset. Strange, but... people on YouTube are upset? <laughs> <laughs> if we didn't do everything, if we were perfect, they'd have nothing to comment about, you know? Okay, lead plate, he's gonna be aiming at, he's using a, a, a smooth bore with bead sights, by the way, folks. Um, we're still at 12 yards? 15. 15 yards, okay. I, I I need to be reminded of these things. <laughs> so, okay, first with the normal wad, which seemed to held up really well. I I thought they were going to have some issues with that, but so I'm wrong. I'm I'm always wrong though. Okay, he's aiming at the blue little dot square. Let's see if we can get a chrono reading this time. Okay, I'm ready. Another error. Yeah, we're getting some weird errors. This should be going about 1,400 feet per second by my powder load. Okay, I'm ready. I got my camera settings dialed in a little better and we can see just how stable that slug is without any spin stabilization. We normally start our tests at around 10 yards, but we went 15 yards this time and we were not disappointed. This thing was very accurate. Okay, now with the split wad, Again, the same distance, same same everything, through a smooth bore, like they have in Marasha. Okay, are you about ready? Yeah, I'm ready. Okay. Our blue dot there is about, uh, what, 11 o'clock? Yes. All right, let's see what we can do. With the split wad, we have, again, very good stability. Uh, we're not seeing much of a difference between the two systems other than the point of impact, which is kind of normal when you change things up like that. But so far, both systems seem to be quite adequate for this application. We're sitting about like this. Yes. This is about 11 o'clock, so I hit about, what, 1045? <laughs> <laughs> That one looks like it's uh, in there a little straighter than the, our first one. Look at the lead extruding yeah, I, through the hole. I'll have to figure out how to pull those out. I'm sure they're I'm sure they're pretty mushroomed actually. What are you what are you doing? Oh just checking. Okay. <laughs> just checking to make sure that was an actual hole. A little bit of brass in the bottom right there. Yeah. If that one broke. It it's uh, if I ever get those out, I'll have to maybe melt it or something, but it'll be interesting to see what kind of shape. I imagine they're quite mushroom, though. Hmm. How did that feel there? That was pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> Put it in right below the brass. Yeah, I think your finger fits better. Yeah. Right here. Sure. <laughs> finger right below the brass. You've got big fingers. Folks, don't freak out. This pork shoulder is expired meat. So we're going to uh, blow it up and feed the coyotes out here. Okay, regular wad at just the meat target, actually, folks. Um, he's going to aim at the, what, the dot on the left or the right? Uh, we got a dot on the left, we'll go for that. We got to use the same meat target on this shot because we're comparing two slugs and they have to have the, the same density. If you use two different types of meat, 
um, you'd have two different types of density. It wouldn't be a fair test, and plus we're really cheap and poor. Yeah, because this is science. <laughs> yeah. Okay, which one are you going for? Uh, dot on the left. Okay, left dot, ready. Woo! Danny again is doing an impressive job keeping these things on target using just bead sights, which is not a very accurate uh, sighting method. But it's a real world test. A lot of people just use bead sights when they're hunting with shotguns. And it's completely suitable for engagements up to around 50 yards away. 14.53 on that shot. So I was pretty close as far as my powder load data goes. Okay, now we'll use the split wad at the, say, at the meat target at 15 yards again. Well, that was at 2073. We've, we moved the chronograph back, so we might be getting some readings of, of the wadding and stuff. Even though the powder loads were identical, we did see a much more energetic impact on this shot. A much more massive cavitation wound to our meat target. So we may have a more efficient gas seal using this system. Oh, yuck, that, that just tore open that meat. Last it, time I cut my finger in one of these damn things. You so. did, yeah, yeah. A bone or something. Trying, it, Remember that bone shard? Bone shard. Yeah. And then here's the interesting thing. Big giant uh, wound cavity on the front, but the backs are rather, rather small. Oh yeah, I got the skin. You should have turned the skin side. What's wrong with this? Look at this. Here's your, uh, here's your skin exit on the first one. I'm sorry, that's the second one. Skin exit on the first one. So, I hope you have some Purell with you. That just no, I just I just licked these fingers. Oh, okay. <laughs> that way we're clean. I don't want to. I don't want to have anything dirty touching my. Remember mouth. that's a expired meat, folks. Yeah, it's expired meat. It's old meat. Yeah. In no way would this be viable food for humans. Or a dog or anything. Or so. anything. Maybe a coyote. Or children in Africa. The, the coyotes are going to love that. That's right. So this just shows you how elastic skin is. And, of course, pork skin is very similar to human skin, um, except it's from pork. <laughs> <laughs> but it shows you how elastic it is. All that meat damage that came from the other side of Danny's shells uh, doesn't translate when it blasts through this little skin layer. So. Okay. All right. We could, I feel comfortable about moving the target back a little bit, aren't you? Are you, Danny? Yeah, we can go back. Uh... I'm uncomfortable with that idea. You guys got a piece of bread and some mayonnaise? <laughs> Folks, Old Meat is the name of Danny's Retro Fusion Country Band. They'll be playing tonight at uh, the downtown stadium. Okay, now we're around 50 yards. Is that correct? It may appear closer on your screen. Often my, on my screen, the objects looked about three inches away. <laughs> but it, it you know if you have a device that's smaller it might look like it's one inch away but in reality we're 50 yards away and he's going to go for the left target with the standard wad got it that's a good sign 50 yards experimental uh, prototype slug is very good 50 yards is about the maximum effective range you can use bead sights with. Danny did a very good job just hitting that plate. And it's also about the maximum range we can zoom in with the Kronos high-speed camera and still see the projectile's uh, orientation. Okay, now split wad. And it, again, he's not using a rest, this is his, his elbows. Um, and a bead sight, so. You said the B site pretty much covers up the whole target? Yeah, I can't see the plate behind the <laughs> site there. <laughs> you gotta appreciate this, folks. This is a Kentucky guesstimation. Okay, um, I'm ready when you are. Are you filming? Okay, hit it. And he hit it. Oh. Hit it. And he hit it. Oh. This shot was even more accurate than the first shot. These may be traveling at a slightly higher velocity than the standard sporting wad. But we could clearly see that the slug was stable all the way to 50 yards and beyond.
downrange you might be able to see Danny's going to be shooting at a barrel of explosives <laughs> straight out of straight out of Fortnite full of gasoline and there's a nuclear tipped missile uh, duct tape to the back let's see if he can do it okay um, I just want to make a clarification the standpipe back there I, ma I made an error when I was calculating that it, it's I think I said it was a thousand yards you said it was three thousand three thousand feet Feet. Yes, I'm yeah, or a thousand yards. yards. It is sixteen hundred and fifty feet, or five hundred and some yards. So, I apologize for that. I, I felt bad. It's like, oh man, I, I got some wrong data there. But uh, w how far do you think that uh, tracer slug actually went? It, it didn't go past that, right? Oh no, no, it fell short of it. Yeah, it might have four hundred. 450 yards or something like that, which is what we were expecting. But the trucks off in the background are only 200 yards away <laughs> and well within range of a slug. You remember, this is a rifle range, and that, that's the direction they shoot at, you know, and it's safer rifles, it's definitely safer shotguns. They're going to hit those vehicles. Now we, we've got the barrel back out. I love the barrel. I think a lot of people like the barrel. Large target. How far do you got it out this time? Uh, by the laser range finder, it's at 150 yards. My, okay. Um, I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> with the uh, bead sights, with the uh, slugs that we haven't really dialed in yet, so we may miss this, or he may surprise us. I don't know. You you often surprise me because I'm always wrong. First one with the normal wad. Is that correct? Yes. Okay, 150 yard shot. You rolling? Ready to go. Okay, hit it. Ka-donk. Ha, <laughs> clunk. You can definitely tell when you hit those things. Barrels are awesome. Ka-donk. Ha, <laughs> clunk. Okay, now the split slugs. So far, they're they're even, kind of even. They have their own different ballistics. I've noticed. Definitely different recoil. Different re. The, the split wad's a lot sharper. Without that cushion, that's surprising yeah. that that little cushion would be noticeable like that. Which one punched you in the face? <laughs> All of them. <laughs> they're rough on the cheekbones. All of them got you. <laughs> okay, well, our last one out of ten. These take a while, folks. Let's see if he could hit it again. 150 yards. That's impressive. The Russians know their stuff. I'm ready. Hit it. Now that one bounced off the ground. I heard that one skip. Yeah. So those have been, have been shooting a little bit lower than the other ones, right? Yeah. Yeah. So he hit the barrel. It was a it was a bounce. Bouncy baby shot, but... It was probably holding two foot over the top of the barrel. The first one was a little more accurate, just low. Yeah, Danny was holding over the top of the barrel and it hit the bottom of the barrel with a nice solid punch. The guy on the right skipped off the dirt. But yeah, I don't think we have a camera zooming in on it. We kind of failed to do that on the target. Oh, please tell us about the failures in the comment section, folks. Yeah, woulda, coulda, shoulda. <laughs> we love it. But anyway, they, they both hit the barrel remarkably at 150 yards. Yeah, that's crazy which is really good for any slug, much less one you really haven't really sighted in yet, you know? Unlike video games, the barrel did not blow up. <laughs> yeah, you have to shoot it three times, oh, I think. Oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah. And, you have to and then you get, like, t tokens or something yeah, inside. And you have to parachute in from a jet. Yeah, with a, yeah. With a magic parachute that appeared on your back. <laughs> but, yeah, those, those went all the way through. Put very big holes in it. That's still got some power at this range, man. When yeah. They, they'll punch it you. took a while yeah. to, for it. It's like, is it, he shot it. It's like, oh, he missed. He missed. Wait, wait. Oh, bunk. 
Well, they got that much power to make it through two walls of steel at 150 yards. That's pretty decent. Yeah. I, I love the barrel target. That, those are great. Did that so, last one actually skip or no? I, I'm sure it did. I don't see any marks, I don't though. See any marks from it. Yeah. I didn't have any cameras zoomed in on the target, but... You guys couldn't tell at the time, but I was actually hiding inside this barrel when he shot it, so... And you wanted to put a camera inside there. Well... That would have hit the camera. When it was flipped over. I know that people have these, these ideas on, in the comment <laughs> section. I would have sat inside the barrel with a camera. <laughs> You're protected by steel, you know? It would have <laughs> exactly. Been... It's, uh, there's no way that's going to make it through. So 150 yards with a very, you know, prototype slug. I think, I think Alexi... In both configurations, it, it, it seems to work very well. We actually would have been safe laying on top of the barrel, filming. Well, would have, could have, should have. Yes. Could have aimed at my head. Yeah, too bad we're all out. <laughs> that was it. Welcome back, Tal Flater folks. We're out at the private rifle range today, so please bear with the gunfire you may hear in the background. Today we're shooting the, uh, we're shooting whatever these slugs are. <laughs> our simulated meat. We've got a plastic bag here to simulate skin. We've got a old meat pork shoulder to simulate pork. We've got two lemons to simulate the lungs. We've got an RC can to simulate the bladder. We've got a brick to simulate bladder the, stones. The <laughs> skull stones. <laughs> <laughs> and then of course we've got our patented Cheetos puffs to simulate the pancreas. The pancreas. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get to it. <laughs> Thank you. 